what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to do part two of how to do pop the lock with Swift and Xcode. Today we will be working on how to add the dots and add a random combination to the lock. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is open up the picker lock and go to pickerlock.xcode project. And now let's make this a bit bigger. And the main differences between the Xcode 6 version of this and the Xcode 7 of this were the touches began. If you have a problem with your touches began, just highlight over it and just type in touches began again and that will solve your problem. And then down here, the only difference was that these used to be variables, but now they wanted it to be let variables because they didn't really change, and that's the only difference. So there you have it, that is the differences between Xcode 6 and Xcode 7 project of this tutorial. So now that we have that all worked out, let's head up here and we're gonna create our dot. So just say var dot, and we'll make this equal to an SK sprite node, open parentheses, close parentheses. Now after this, we're gonna go ahead and create a new function. So just go down here, we're gonna go down here and say func add dot, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And inside of this, this is where we're going to add the function that adds our dot onto our scene. So inside of this function, we're just gonna say dot, and we're gonna make this equal to an SK sprite node, open parentheses, and this will be an image named. And now let's go ahead and create our image. So let's head over to Pixelmator or your preferred graphics editor of choice, and we're gonna say create new image. Our image width will be 200 pixels and our height will be 200 pixels. Click OK. And then we can take this image. I'm just going to add a circle onto the scene like so. Make that a bit bigger. And then I'm going to delete the background. So now that we have that all worked out, let's go ahead and say file, export. And then we can go PNG. And I'm going to call this my dot and export. And you want to make sure you export it as a PNG as we are using games. And if you do a JPEG, there will be a white background. So now let's go over to our picker lock. I'm going to click and drag this dot into my picker lock project. And then now I'm gonna shrink down this project right here, head over to my images.xc assets, and right here I'm just gonna click and drag that dot into my scene like so. Now let's head over to our game scene.swift again. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger again. And now let's say dot equals SK sprite node image named, and this will be open quotation mark, close quotation mark, dot. So now let's actually pick a random position for this dot to be placed. Now this is a little bit more confusing than just randomly placing it on the scene because we need it to be on a certain path. Now in order for us to do this, I'm going to go right down here to my move clockwise and I'm gonna take these first three variables that we have right here and just copy and paste those right into my add dot. Now the reason I'm using the person.position.x and the person.position.y is because we want a strategic randomly placed person. We don't want it to be just placed all the way around the screen because then the gameplay could be a little bit boring as you're trying to search all the way throughout the scene and that's just not how you want your game to be. So in this case, we're strategically randomly placing it on top of the scene. And another thing we want to do is tell, okay, if it's moving clockwise, then we want it to be a randomly positioned place behind our person or in front of our person. So in order for us to do this, we're just gonna say if moving clockwise is equal equal to true, then we can say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and then we can say else if moving clockwise is equal equal to false, then we can do this other stuff. So what do we want to happen inside of these if statements? Well, we want to have we want to place it onto our scene. So let's just say it's let temp angle, and we're gonna make this equal to a CG float, and then we want a random value, but there's no dot random function. So how do we get this random value? In, off of a CG float. So let's go ahead and create an extension for our CG float that does create a random var variable. So let's say file, new, file. And inside of this, we're going to say a Swift file. And then after this, we're gonna... Hey, doing good, I'm doing a video right now. The file name, I'm just going to call this my CG float yeah. extension. You can of course call this whatever you want. Create, no, and right over here in my CG I float extension, I'm gonna click and drag that over closer. And right in here in my CG float extension, I wanna say import foundation, that's all good. And then right after our import foundation, we wanna say import core graphics. So now we are going to import core graphics so that we can use a CG float. So now after this, we can say public extension, and this will be an extension to our CG float variable. So after this, you just say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And right after this, we want this to be a public variable. So we're gonna say public 
static, so we don't want this to change really, and then we want to say func, and then the name of this will be random, so we say after that, open parentheses, close parentheses, and we want it to return a variable of our CG float. So now after this, we just say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and inside of this, we want it to return a value of a CG float again, so we're going to say CG float open parentheses float and we're using float because arc for random requires that it is a float variable so we're saying float open parentheses arc for random and then after this you just say open parentheses close parentheses and then close off the parentheses for your float variable then we're going to do the division sign and right after this we're going to say 0x F, 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 F. So we have eight Fs total. And this is dealing with bit rates and whatnot, but essentially this is going to take the variable that we are going to create in just a minute, and we're going to call a random variable off of that variable that we're going to create in just a minute. So let's go ahead and create that random variable. So right after this, we just say public static func, and this will be again random, but this time we're gonna say open parentheses, and we're just gonna type in min min. Now I'm typing min in here twice because you want something to signify that you want a minimum variable. So this is just essentially a placeholder. And then after this, we have this minimum variable. So we're going to say min colon cg float. Then after this, you go comma max colon cg float. And then close off those parentheses. Then after this, you make an arrow so that it's returning a variable of a cg float again. Then open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and inside of this, we're just going to say return. And inside of this, we want this to be cg float dot random. So we're actually going to take this public variable that we put up here. We're going to say random, close that off like so. And this will be multiplied by, and then inside of this, we're going to say open parentheses, close parentheses. This will be our max minus our minimum. So we're creating a difference here and then we're going to add our minimum. So essentially in this case, we're taking this variable right here and we're replacing it with our max minus our minimum plus our minimum. And that pretty much does it for our CG float extension. So just hit command S to save your file, head over to your game scene.swift and inside of this we say let temp angle, so our temporary angle will be equal to a CG float dot random. And after this, we do a minimum variable and our minimum variable will be equal to our radian. So if it's moving clockwise, we want it to be our radian plus 1.0. So our minimum variable will be 1.0. Then our maximum variable will be equal to our radian plus 2.5. So that'll be a little bit less than halfway across our circle. You can make it bigger if you want. Now let's create a path and then place this person randomly up along this path. So let's go right up here. We're going to say let path to, and we're going to make this equal to a UI Bezier path. Open parentheses. We're going to give this an arc center of a CG point, open parentheses, and our X value will be our self dot frame dot width divided by two. And our Y value will be our self dot frame dot height divided by two like so. Our radius, this will be equal to 120 as we signified right down here. Like It's going to be along that same path that our person is built upon. And then our start angle, we're going to make this equal to our temporary angle. And our end angle will be our temp angle plus our CG float variable. So CG float and this will be m underscore pi. Multiply that by 4. So now we have a complete circle essentially then close that off. Clockwise, we are gonna set this to true as we, it really doesn't matter. It's just building from that position and it's wondering if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise from that position. And now we can put this dot along our position. So we can say dot dot position will be equal to, and we're gonna make this equal to our, our path to dot current point. So essentially where this is, where this path is built off of, that is going to be our random point. And now we can just take this and we're going to copy and paste that. So now we have our moving clockwise and we can take this and we're gonna make this minus 1.0 and minus 2.5. And that's all the difference that you need right there. And now let's add this dot onto our scene. So let's say self dot add child and this will be our dot. So now let's add this dot onto our scene. So let's head over to our did move to view and we're gonna say add dot. And now that's going to add the dot as soon as the view loads. So if we were to build and run this right now. Now I forgot to add uh, how big this dot was going to be. Let's head over to our project and go to our add dot. And inside of this, we're just going to say dot dot size. 
and we're gonna make this equal to a CG size open parentheses with a width of 30 and a height of 30. You can of course play around with that, but I'm going to make that like that. And now if we were to build and run this, you will see that we have our dots. But the thing is our Z position of our dot is behind our circle. So in order for us to fix this, let's just go up here. We're gonna say dot dot Z position, and we're gonna make this equal to 1.0. So we have this dot Z position equal to 1.0, so now we placed it in front of this circle. And now we can also do this with our person, because as you can see, our person isn't showing up. So let's go to our person in our did move to view, and we're gonna say person dot Z position, and we're gonna make this equal to 2.0, because we want it to go above the dot. Now let's build and run. And now you can see that we have our person like so. And now let's add, actually add some functionality to this dot. So let's go right down here to our update function that we create that we have automatically created for us. If not, just go ahead and add it. You just type in update and it should automatically fill it in for you. So now we have our update. Now inside of this, we want to say if our person dot intersects node. So just type in intersects node dot if, if our person intersects the node dot, then we want things to happen. Now, what exactly do we want to happen? Well, let's go ahead and add that. So inside of this, we want to create a variable. So let's go up here to our variables right up here, and I'm gonna say var intersected, and we're gonna make this equal to a false variable right now. Because when the view loads, we want it to automatically be false. We don't want it to be true. So now, if the person dot intersects node dot, we wanna set intersected, equal to true. Now that's it for if the person intersects the node. Now if the person doesn't intersect the node, we want to test a few things. We can say if intersected is equal equal to true. So this is meaning that, oh, it's intersected the dot, but it's not touching the dot. So there's something wrong here. So what do we want to happen when that's happening? Well, then we can say if the person dot person dot intersects node and we're gonna say if the person intersects no dot is equal equal to false, so the dot is no longer touching it. So the person has intersected it in the past and now it's no longer intersecting it. So if this happens, we wanna say self dot remove all children. So we're going to remove everything off the scene and we're going to reset the scene. Now you'll notice when you lose, you have this little red flash that goes on. So let's go ahead and create the red flash. We're gonna say let action one and we're going to make this equal to an sk action dot colorize with color we're going to colorize it with the color of a ui color since it's asking for that dot red color color blend factor so we want this to be 1.0 meaning that it's going to blend completely with the background and then our duration we're just going to make this really quick so 0.2 seconds then after this, we can say let action two, and we're gonna make this equal to an sk action dot colorize with color, and this time we're just gonna set it back to our normal white. So we're gonna say ui color dot white color. Color blend factor, we're gonna set this equal to 1.0, and duration will be 0.2 as well. So now we wanna take these actions and run it in a sequence. So we can say self dot scene dot run action, and we're going to run an action of our sk action dot sequence. So we're going to sequence these actions that we created. So our sequence will be open square bracket, close square bracket, action one, comma, action two. So now it's going to run action one and then action two again. So essentially in this, the person has lost. So now if we were to build and run this, let's just test this out real quick. If we were to build and run this right now, you can see that, okay, I built and run and it intersects. So now we have this red flashing and it's just very persistent. So now let's head back over to our project and let's make it so it doesn't keep happening over again and let's just make it reset the scene. So we're gonna say moving clockwise, we're gonna set this equal to false. We're gonna go down here and say intersected will be equal to false as well. And then we're also going to say game started will be equal to false. Then we want it to load our scene again. So in order for us to do this, let's go up here to our did move to view. I'm going to go right underneath this. I'm gonna create a new function called load view. And then open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And inside of this, I'm going to take everything that's inside of my did move to view, copy and paste that right into the load view and just delete everything inside of my did move to view and just type in load view. 
So now this just makes it so it's more accessible so we can call it later. So if we go down here to our update function now, we can go right underneath everything and just say self.loadView. So it's going to load the view again once all this happens. Now, if we were to build and run this, you will see that we're going to pass the dot and then it just reloads the view, picks a new position for our dot, like so. Now this is working great. This is exactly what we want it to do. We want it to go past the dot and we lose the game. But now there's no way to win the game. So let's go over to our project. We're gonna go into our game scene.swift, go down here to the bottom just before update. And I'm just gonna type in a function and this will be our dot touched function. Open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So now inside of this dot touched function, what are exactly are we going to test here? We wanna say, okay, if it's intersected and we touch the screen, so if intersected is equal, equal to true, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, we want to say dot remove from parent, and we want to continue on with our game. So we're going to add a dot. And then after this, we can say intersected will be equal to false. So this is if we touch the dot when we are over the dot with our lock. After this, we want to say else if our, it, it is intersected, and we're going to say this is equal to false like so, then we want to do this other stuff. So if we touch the screen and we're not touching the dot, that means we have died, essentially. So now we want all this stuff that happens inside of this intersect node inside of our update to happen when we call a function. So let's go ahead and create a function just called died, and then open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and inside of this I'm just going to take everything that I have inside of here, delete that, and just put that right inside of my died. So now I can just put this right into this update function. And now we are going to just call died as soon as that happens. So we're just replacing it, all that stuff with a function. And now we can also put this right into our dot touched and we can just type in died. Now this dot touched function is never being called because we haven't put it into anything. So let's head up here to our touches began. And right inside of this, we want to go right into the else if statement that says game started is equal equal to true. We don't want this to happen as soon as they start the game. We want to say dot touched like so. So now if we were to build and run this, we can start our game. And if we touch the dot, it moves it to a different position like so. And then if we miss or if we click beforehand, we can die. Now, for some reason, the game is starting automatically, but we will fix that in part three. So now you will notice that if I touch the on the dot, it creates it at a random position before and after my the position of my person. And this keeps the game kind of interesting rather than having to go all the way around the screen to actually get to the dot. Now, I do want to acknowledge that there is a glitch right now. So if I play the game for a little bit right now, if I click before the dot, it makes me press twice before I have to click again. And that's due to this game started function for some reason, but I am working on fixing that at the moment. But either way, there you have it. That is most of the game already done. Next time we will fix that glitch and also we will work on scoring. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.